Okay, so something you don't know about me is that COVID turned me into an amateur birder. I just love birds. And a few years ago, I, I'm particularly fond of the Corvids. I mean, who isn't really? I, it's like a bucket list that I have a cor Corvid best friend someday. Uh, but until then, I'm gonna have to be satisfied with a Corvid robot. Really? Yes. Um, this is a animatronic built for the movie Hansel and Gretel, the Jeremy Renner film. Uh, and I picked it up from Prop Store for a pretty good price. It has three servos in it and I'm just running them out of a hardwired servo board. And the reason it's out today is well, there will be a build with this. Someday I want to program it so it's like part of a doorbell, right? Yeah. Uh, but until then, uh, it's here in my shop. It's been sitting on a shelf uh, waiting for me to get inspired to make this. Uh, and while it was there, our friends at Lumafield, a local San Francisco company that makes a portable CT scanner for industry, asked me if there was something in my collection I wanted to scan all the way through and be able to fly through and end up with a 3D model of. And I was like, yeah, how about my Corvid here, my animatronic uh, raven? Well, I think it's more of a crow, not a raven. Really? Yes, I do. All right, bow to the people. Uh, we're gonna take this over to their CT scanner and see just how it's constructed. Yeah, this is a nice way to end it, bow. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, you scanned this thing, which is one of my favorite weird objects in my collection. This is the, the a raven that I got from Prop Store. I think it was used in Hansel and Gretel. What do you think of this? Tell me what you thought of this as a scan, first of all. I mean, first of all, I love birds. I'm oh, really? an amateur birder. Oh. <laughs> so, love the, uh, the subject here. Um, definitely was not expecting, I had no idea what was going to be inside. And that was the cool thing about the CT scan is it allows us to see everything that's in here. And I really wasn't expecting to see so many motors crammed inside. <laughs> yes. So this is an animatronic bird. It actually can move its head. You can hear those little servos, the beak. And there's a there's a few more axes of movement. Am yeah, I right? In here? Yeah. Let's uh. So let's see what the yeah, CT scan this, revealed. Let's look at the scan. So this is you can see it right here. Um, we can start by looking at the radiographs. Um, so this is just the pure radiographs. Um, and you can see as I rotate through here, you can see what's happening as the um, bird or the raven is is moving through the scanner. We, we're rotating it. And so I see a servo here and a servo yep, here. And a, exactly is that a it. smaller servo? Or it's, they... there, it's a small, medium, and large servo. Wow. Um, and we can actually look at them in closer detail later. Um, but you can actually tell like that they, they're they different size. They must be designed for different torques because the smaller one actually has just plastic gears. And then yeah, the larger yeah. one you can start seeing have more Oh, metal interesting, gears. right. You can see all yeah. the... So based on the different densities, they're showing up darker. That means it's metal. Um, all the light stuff is must be some sort of um, composite or, or plastic. Um, and the feathers aren't showing up. And the at feathers all. aren't showing up. <laughs> and so once you click over here, so this is the full reconstruction um, after we've kind of stitched all of those radiographs together, and mm -hmm. you can see the full um, kind of three D effect going on here. Um, and so. If we look at these, you can kind of look in more detail. Oh, this um, is really interesting. So I find myself wondering if those holes on there, yeah, this, aren't a way to hold on to some fabric. This is something I was going to ask about is what this kind of outer structure is. It looks like some sort of kind of like breastplate or something or some sort of structure that's giving this bird something to kind of be more solid yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. okay. It's fiberglass is what oh, it is. So okay, because I was going to ask how that's made. If lay him down and we look, you can see the, yep, right? There you see you that go. telltale epoxy yellow with what looks like four ounce glass, give or take. Uh, and so, right, this is a, it's a classic animatronics move. Uh, they've sculpted the bird. They probably have a negative mold and they, they made this piece to flesh out his torso, but still allow uh, some movement between, and I'm guessing there's probably these holes are to allow fabric to actually transition up, up, the, up yeah. the bird's neck. Yeah, and I guess that's because this, you know, so we have mo a motor up here for the beak, so the beak can actuate. We have another one in the middle that allows um, the head to nod up and down. And then this one at the bottom looks like it's allowing the head to rotate from side to side, which must be there Oh, there you we go. go. <laughs> so that's one, that's another, and then that's a third. And I love, this is the head turn. 
Yeah. It's this big, it's this this big lever and I can feel it. So that's clearly uh, the holes and the, the, the the cloth covering is to allow something to glue all the feathers onto. And these might not even be feathers. This might be, I see there's feathers down here, but the whole head might be fur. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's a classic move in, in special effects for fine feathers to use fur. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to tell. And this is, yeah, is s- that metallic? We can- so this looks like it's some sort of here. We can actually go in more detail. Um, yeah, actually, this is probably a better view. So this oh. is actually the two side by side. This is two different scans. This is one with the beak o- closed and one with the beak open. Um, and you can see here as I zoom in, this is a good shot of that um, metal lever uh, where it looks like this must be some sort of steel. Yeah. Um, I have to tell you, if I was an effects guy and my supervisor brought me this and said, I need you to get it working, <laughs> I might bring it here to be like, because this is a thing. I have had to work with pieces I couldn't see inside so of. And yet in there. these priceless artifacts you can't necessarily <laughs> yeah. take apart. You're not going to cut this open. This is a fantastic step. Um, um, I love that you can see the four screws that hold the case exactly. of the servo together and yeah, the same and, thing up there. And actually, we should probably look at, um, <gasps> here's a close-up of one of the servos. Um, and you can see this is one that I think has the metal gears, just because you can see them so clearly here. Um, so you can, that's the motor. This I is the see motor. The windings, and exactly. then this is the gear train. And then this would be the encoder. Exactly. Some sort of potentiometer. And then you've got, uh, this must be the PCB, because mm-hmm. you see some solder blobs. I think it's. I think it actually might be an optical encoder. Okay. That is, but uh, that is so neat to see it like yeah, that. Yeah, you can see some sort of... Uh, circuit or integrated circuit up here this is the um, mouth right because that's the is that the i think this is the neck this is the middle oh okay, okay. this is the middle one the um the mouth has all plastic oh gears, right, right, so you right, can right. hardly okay. see them and so these yellow things are part of the circuit board. the circuit board the yeah there's some solid solder. state i bet it's solder um, oh right yeah showing up and then you can see the wiring of course very clearly here i really dig that um, and then the red here that must be it's a little bit darker. It must be because is know. that like it's a higher density? So Within these are the metal maybe gears? however the screws are formed. Yeah, it must be that there are higher density in there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then you can see the rotor in more detail here. Oh. You can actually see the copper windings if you look closely. These oh. are. Will you keep moving it? Um, it's just yeah. when you're moving it, I feel like <laughs> I'm learning all sorts of. Oh. Uh huh. This is what I think x-ray vision should feel like. Yeah. And then one thing I was surprised at, it looks like this motor is offset from this gear. So it looks like it's running on the inside of this gear, right? Like it's not, it's not concentric with this um, gear. So it must be driving the inside. So it's, uh, wow, that's like probably a space saving uh, advantage problem. Yeah, yeah. They probably couldn't package that. And then you can also see here we have the slices. So... Uh, if you look at this, this is, I think, the lower, the large lower motor, and this is the middle motor. Um, and then you can see us slicing <gasps> through. Oh, wow. Oh. And you can kind of see what that looks like, which is pretty cool. Oh, I saw the magnets of the oh, motor. Yeah. There. There they are. <laughs> yeah. It's been going on the last 20 years or so in special effects where people stopped building linkages with cables and just started mounting things directly, directly. to servos. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, and so this is, these are two examples of exactly what's in here. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I actually, I think I was comparing the size and it looked like this black one was actually similar to the one that fits right up in. in so even Bird's though we have a large, medium and small, none of them are as small as I this thing. I don't think so. I, but they've just gotten so small now. That's amazing. Yeah, they really have. Yeah, it, yeah. Back when I was starting out, they were all one size and you had mm-hmm. to, yeah, you wouldn't be able to do such a thing. We actually also were able to get uh, a 3D model of this no. because uh, oh. we have the 3D data, volumetric data, and so we were actually able to 3D print uh, a copy of this uh, right, crow of or course, raven. Because you take all the scans and you turn them into a 3D model, you can print that. Yeah, yeah. So we actually have a 3D print. Um, here we go. Here. So we actually have two copies. We printed oh. one at the kind of full size. Um, and this then is a slice. A, exactly. We were able to slice in because oh. we have. Oh, oh my go. gosh. It's even. So and you it can see has the mesh. The <laughs> mesh. Okay. My mind is freaking blown. Your software was able to extrapolate back out through the density of this. That, yeah. that is a, a, a web mesh Very, holding the fur on. Yeah. That's mind blowing. Yeah, and you can even see the wires, actually. Um, I think some of the cabling down here, mm-hmm, those are mm-hmm. just like some of the cables that we're able to print. Um, yeah. 
This is insane. And then this, this is, is just full a, size. Yeah, larger copy. Wow, no, this is exactly, again, <laughs> I mean, I know that they use this in medicine, right, for being able mm -hmm. to know that a prosthetic you're making will fit to the yep. body. But this is incredible because I would be using this to be like, oh, yeah, I could get my speaker in here and I'll have a little extra room if I needed it. Yeah, and so that's actually one of the use cases is you don't necessarily have to print um, the model that you've scanned, but you can actually use it to model around. You can bring it into your CAD software and then model around it if you needed something to fit over it or inside of it, or you just need to, to kind of use it as a reference point. I just love the fact that like I'm holding, I'm touching a <laughs> exact simulacrum of the fiberglass undershell here, except it was made by bouncing beams <laughs> off of this thing. That is totally amazing. Wow. Oh, that's really cool. I had no idea you'd be able to I mean, and I know this looks a little bit crunchy, but frankly, from an engineering standpoint, there's so much freaking information here. It's incredible. I really love that. Also, you know, more crows. More crows. <laughs> you have scanned lots and lots of things in this, yes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, what has surprised you the most? Mm, I think my first scan um, was a pair of binoculars because I'm an amateur birder sure. and I thought that'd be really cool to see what's inside. Um, so we threw it in and I think what was most surprising was seeing some of the optics were actually plastic. Some of the, the optical components. So you can see like a prism in there and it was actually plastic and I Amazing. had no idea. Yeah. Um, I found out from some camera specialists that one of the reasons that um, Apple started with some plastic elements in their iPhone cameras was because you can actually achieve a higher manufacturing tolerance with some plastics than glass wow. for certain lensing. That's surprising. I didn't expect that. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed that. That is, I love also the, that packing in the pair of prisms inside a binocular yeah. to create that artificial distance. It's it was really all, cool. yeah, it was oh. really nice skin. Kaylin, thank you so much. I, as, a, as a fellow amateur <laughs> learner, I feel like we've achieved something here. I appreciate it. So nice to meet you. Thank you, thank you. I did not expect to have my socks knocked off by what this technology can do, but on this half-scale scan, the fact that you can see the webbing of the fabric that the fur and feathers are attached to that allow the three mechanical pieces of this animatronic to connect together, that outer fabric is resolved and printed in this 3D resin print. I had no idea an X-ray could do such a thing. Um, and yeah, now this guy is, he's gotten a little more under my skin in the best way. So it won't be too long before I program him, light him up, turn him into an actual character. Uh, Lumafield, thank you so much for giving me this <gasps> bird's eye view. I just came up with that. I'm really sorry. Okay, let's go. You can explore Lumafield's CT scan of my animatronic crow yourself, as well as the other objects they've scanned from my collection at the link in the description below.